Some guys like boobs, some guys like butts, some guys might even like feet. But me? Hey guys, my name is Juan Echo, and I'm attracted to autistic girls. So I recently stumbled upon a clip of Mari Mario underscore Ian telling people Can I ask you a serious question? What? Do you have autism? <laughs> And that's when something in my brain just clicked. Because that's when I realized that I liked autistic girls. I was in a bit of denial at first because I just thought the voices inside my head were playing tricks on me again. But actually, it wasn't that. Thinking back, autism was always present in my life and I just never noticed. For example, when I think about some of my favorite anime waifus. Yumiya the Dokness from Villainous Level 99, Free Rin, Sheena from Sakura So, and then also the closeted autists from Facebook. And looking at my real life friends, I noticed that the percentage of autism was a lot higher than the reported proportion of autism in the world. It all just makes sense now. So when I really came to terms with my newly awakened fetish, I felt like a huge weight was suddenly off my shoulders. It was like I literally reached a new stage in self-actualization. I think that I've finally come to realize what I'm passionate about. As I come to talk to you today, I can barely even contain my excitement just thinking about autistic women. Like just imagine. When they Alright, I'm done gushing over autistic girls. Now let's talk about how this is relevant to you. The more practical reasons to have someone autistic as a partner. But before I get brutally DM'd by 16 autistic girls, I gotta say that I would never allow myself to develop romantic feelings for anyone I don't interact with in real life. So ladies, please control yourself. I already get swarmed by attractive women on a daily basis, and being a VTuber is the only way I can escape the terrors of reality, okay? Now with that being said, sit down, buckle the fuck up, and listen closely, because I am about to show you the light. Here's how autistic girls are the most optimal long-term romantic partners. Obviously people have a lot more nuance than just being autistic, so realistically I only like a specific type of autistic girl, but regardless, there's still a lot of heavy lifting that autism can do. Now we first have to understand what forms the basis of a healthy, long-lasting relationship. In general, I think we can probably agree on these few things. Loyalty, communication, compatibility, and a willingness to grow. You can still have a relationship without these, but it just probably won't last or it'll be a pretty draining relationship. I won't bullshit you though. Autism doesn't mean you get all of what I just listed, but it's highly likely that they'll at least check off the first two, which is already better than neurotypicals. Because first of all, being with an autistic individual means that you will get loyalty. Are you worried about being cheated on? Well, autism is the solution. Just think about it. Autistic people got no riz. They just sit there and be like, okay, where the love at? How do I do this shit? So how the fuck they gonna cheat if they can't even flirt? But seriously, autistic people tend to be extremely loyal and they dislike any sort of manipulation or deception. So you can rest assured that if they decide to choose you, they'll be truly committed to that relationship. Now the next pillar of a healthy relationship is communication. We all know that communication is key to a healthy relationship. Now. If we look at this cute diagram listing the traits on the spectrum, we can see how communication... <laughs> hey yo, that's crazy. Anyway, uh, people with autism have the best kind of communication because they're direct communicators. Even though they might be awkward with approaching you with what they want, you can be sure that their style of communication will let you two understand each other's needs better when the time comes. No more of that small talk bullshit. You want sex? Just ask. It's as simple as you, me, sex, no. And she'll probably say no, but at least you got it across, you know? And most importantly, no more of those dumb psychological games that some immature girls like to play. Just to put a completely theoretical example out there, when someone goes like, oh, let me get mad at something and be quiet for 10 minutes and hope he'll magically understand that something he did made me mad while not giving any hints, har har har. And I'm just gonna let that resentment build up until I finally explode in six months and blame him for not noticing. Yeah, fuck you, Olivia. Stay single, you immature little bitch. Anyway, the most efficient communication is when you both make sure the information you get across to the other person is clear and honest. And even if what results from it may not be what you want, it'll definitely be what you need. Now the next pillar 
of a healthy relationship is compatibility. But we all know autism isn't for everyone. I know I get annoyed sometimes when they keep saying these really random things and finding it funny. Like, how the fuck do you point at random shit on the street like a fire hydrant and then ask me if I agree? Like, I don't understand. Listen, I know that happiness can be found in the little things, but I'm just like, I'm not capable of that. So my humor is like a bit more sophisticated and it involves being racist. And speaking of being racist, let's talk about the next trait, acceptance and understanding. Autistic people are much more likely to be empathetic, accepting and understanding because of the difficulties in life they experience as neurodivergent people. They may face social struggles and always feel out of place because of how they grew up different from everyone else. Now, being more understanding of others won't make or break a relationship. But personally, I find that this is a very important trait to have because I would absolutely need my future partner to be able to understand and accept that I'm racist. For a relationship to work, each person needs to accept the other person for everything they have, right? Including their flaws. So yeah. By now, I've probably convinced you to drop on all fours and bark like a dog the next time you see an autistic girl. But there's a catch. As a wise man once said, no free lunch. Because finding someone autistic is rare. They have drop rates of around 2% of the world population with no hard pity. And boys are more than twice as likely to be autistic. So you'll realistically need to do over 200 polls before ever finding one. If those rates aren't bad enough, you have to remember that traditional Riz does not work on them. You might feel like you're harassing them if you try to flirt and see no reaction from them. Now, if we think in terms of simple economics, that supply and demand shit, I don't know. Um, we can reasonably conclude that I'm going to remain bitchless for the rest of my life. Uh, as smart as I am, I don't actually have a solution to offer you. But if anyone watching this has an autistic girlfriend, please leave a comment for everyone explaining how you did it. Please, please man, please, 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 please!